Hi friends, I hope everyone is doing well. Before I bound this art journal, I painted a few pages so I wouldn't be starting all the collages looking at a blank page. Today I'll be working on the pages that I painted using an old gift card. As you'll see in a moment, the grounds are very busy. I really had to think about how to collage on top without each one looking chaotic. I'm planning on keeping the supplies simple, collage papers, glue stick, and scissors. Each collage section will start with the video of how I created each ground, so let's get started. For this first ground, I'm using Blake's Matte Acrylic Paint in white, warm gray, and black. I typically use matte acrylic paint when working in an art journal. Regular acrylic paint usually causes the pages to stick together. I'm starting with painting with black, which is the darkest color. There are a few ways to apply the paint to a gift card. First is pouring out the paint into a palette, then scooping it up with the gift card. The second one is taking a brush and applying the paint to the gift card. And the other way is applying the paint straight from the bottle or tube directly onto the gift card. I prefer the first two methods, which you'll see me using in this video. With this technique, I prefer to apply a small amount of paint, then build up the area with more paint if needed. As we know when painting on paper, it's easier to add paint than to remove it. I made the decision not to take the black paint from one edge to the other. You will see why when I apply the next color. Even though I'm painting on a single sheet of paper, I decided to protect the areas of the paper that I don't want painted. I used washi tape on the fold of the paper and there's copy paper underneath. You don't need to do this step. Instead, you can paint the whole paper if you'd like. For this painting section, the video is playing in real time so you can see how long it took me to paint this paper. The other two painting sections will be sped up to save time. I like to let the first layer of paint dry before painting the next layers. You can get some cool effects if the paint is still wet when applying the other layers. For these grounds, I decided to let the paint dry first between layers. Next, I'm applying the warm gray, which I consider mid-tone value. I'm starting from the right side, then overlapping partially on top of the black paint. I want some of the pure warm gray color to show. I love the transparent look of the warm gray over part of the black paint. If you have a light hand and not too much paint on the gift card when applying the second layer of paint, then you'll get this transparency. It's a cool effect. Here's the finished painted ground. I like the way it turned out. I love the look of the paint when it's dragged across the paper. Now on to collaging on top. 
Here are the papers I pulled. I won't be using all of them. I just like to have options readily available when collaging. I think the bright colors will contrast nicely with the black, white, and gray ground. My plan is to have relatively large collage elements to start, then add smaller accent colors. I love the variation of colors on this green painted paper. It was created when mono printing. I applied the green paint on top of the gel plate after I did the initial print. There was some blue paint left on the gel plate when I made this print. I like the look of an arch or part of an arch element on a collage. It's a shape that I want to use more in my collage practice. As you might have noticed, I decided to tear the pink and white paper instead of cutting it with scissors. I have yet to perfect tearing a paper arch, so that's why I use scissors for that shape. All the other shapes will be torn. I'm not sure of the placement of the larger elements, so I'm going to wait to glue those pieces until I have it figured out. This light pink and green circle monoprinted papers ties in nicely with the pink and white paper and the green arch. I decided that there was too much white torn edge showing. I do like the look of the white edge, but I don't want too much showing for this collage. I want to make sure the elements are defined against the ground. These collage papers are light to mid-tone, so a darker value paper is needed. This purple monoprinted paper will add a good contrast against the other papers. Also, there isn't much black ground showing in the lower half of the ground, so adding this purple paper, which is dark in value, in this area will help to balance the collage. I'm happy with the placement of these elements, so it's time to start gluing. As I'm placing the glued papers back on the substrate, I'm continuing to check the placement of the other papers. The next step is to add small accent papers. This blue monoprinted paper will add a nice contrast to the pink and white paper. At this point, the collage needed more dark value elements. It's a minor thing, but I'm trimming the green arch to redefine the shape and to let more of the other papers underneath show.
The clutch is almost finished, but I feel it needs one more small element. I'm testing out this bright green paper, but it's too light. A small piece of the purple paper will add more contrast. This is the finished collage. I'm happy with the way it turned out. On to the next one. For this next round, I'm using Blix Matte Acrylic Paint in Violet Deep, Amethyst, and Off-White. Once again, I'm using paint that is light, mid, and dark in value. I will start with the darkest value, which is the Violet Deep, then apply the mid-tone, the Amethyst, and end with the Off-White. I'm speeding up this section because I'm applying the paint the same way as I did for the first round. Here are the papers for this collage. I think the orange will contrast nicely with the purpley ground. I'll be using the cruciform composition for this collage. Since it's my go-to composition, I'll be gluing as I cut the papers. I'm comfortable with this style, so I'm confident of the placement of the collage elements. This black paper was monoprinted, so it's not a solid black. I like the slight variation in color and minor marks on it. I prefer the look of this black paper to a perfectly solid black paper. This paper will be the base of the other papers that will extend out to make the cruciform shape. All the papers for this collage will be cut instead of torn. This gray painted paper was monoprinted as well. You can see some variation of gray and some green. This paper was monoprinted the same way as the green paper from the previous collage. It was printed after the initial monoprinted paper was created. If you're interested in how to monoprint, I have tutorials on my channel that I'll link in the description area. Back to the gray paper, I'm considering it mid-tone and in value, and I'll place it in the four areas that will start to create the cruciform shape. I prefer to cut shapes that have a slight angle and not to be a perfect square or rectangle. I think it's more interesting to look at than a perfect shape. Since I'm creating in an art journal, I'm being mindful not to glue any of the paper against the gutter of the journal. I don't want the paper to crease or wrinkle when the journal is closed. Next, I'm adding the orange paper for contrast. I consider this orange as a mid-tone value. I want the orange shape in this area to be large enough to be impactful, but not to take away too much from the gray shape next to it. This is why I decided to cut out the orange paper into this shape. I could have moved it more to the left, but I want to leave more of this section of the ground showing. To balance the collage, I'm adding orange papers to all four extended areas of the cruciform. At this point, I'm using papers that do not have a pattern. I'm curious to see how the solid colors will look against the busy ground.
Now it's time to add a small amount of light elements as accents. This section of the printed, monoprinted paper has a pattern that reads as light. It won't distract from the other solid papers. I was planning on adding papers to the center black shape. I wanted to wait until near the end so I could see what colors and shapes were needed. By adding the light gray paper on top, we'll add contrast in this area. To balance the collage, I'm adding a very small orange accent shape on top. To continue with balancing the collage, I'm adding small amounts of black paper to the four extended areas. Here's the finished collage. I'm happy with the way it turned out as well. Let's move on to the final collage. I brought out primary colors for this next ground. There's Blix Matte Acrylic Paint in Yellow Bright, Red Deep, and Dark Blue Light. I'm speeding up this section as well. I do want to mention that I'm painting the ground so it'll have a vertical orientation. I find it easier to turn the paper horizontally than paint the paper left to right and right to left instead of top to bottom and vice versa. You can certainly apply the paint top to bottom and vice versa if it's comfortable for you. For me, it's easier to do it this way. I'm starting with blue, then I'll apply yellow, then red. The blue and yellow paint are applied using the same size gift card. I want the red to be an accent color, so I brought out a small card to apply it. I want to point out that applying the blue, then the yellow on top of it, yields a pretty green. This is something to consider when using this technique, since it has transparency. You may not want to use complementary colors such as purple and yellow. You don't want the ground to turn brown, unless you want a brown ground. Here are the papers I pulled for this collage. The ground reads dark to me, so I'm pulling lighter papers that will contrast well with it. The solid yellow paper is bright, but I think it'll be needed for this collage to be successful. Also pulling pattern security papers in red and blue will tie in with the ground. I chose the book pages as a light element. Also, it's a different color, if you will, than the other pages and the ground color. It will add a good detail. Since the ground is vertical, I want the collage elements to be horizontal. I'm leaning towards a sparse collage because I think the focus should be on the ground. The collage papers will be considered accents. 
I'm starting with the blue security envelope to reinforce the horizontal orientation and to section off the collage areas. The pattern on the envelope is structured, so the placement of some of the elements will be a bit askew. Also, I'm being mindful that the papers are not glued right next to the journal's gutter. Continuing with being mindful, the yellow paper needs to be not too large or long. I'm placing this yellow paper in areas where there isn't any yellow paint or not too much yellow paint. I want it to bring balance to the design, not overtake it. When using book pages, I like to place the paper so the viewer won't be able to easily read the text, meaning either place it upside down or sideways. Also, it's a good idea to read the paper to see if there's any words or wording that the viewer would consider offensive. I had second thoughts about the red security envelope. Even though I want the ground to be the focus, I think the collage paper section needs a stronger color, so I brought out this red monoprinted deli paper. The red paper is strong but transparent, which will work well. I think the collage needs just an accent of red. I also have a video on how to make transparent collage papers. I'll link that video in the description area as well. 
I usually adhere painted deli paper with gel medium, but I wanted to see how a glue stick would work. I didn't think to show the gluing process on camera, but I put a small amount of glue on the back side of the paper. Deli paper doesn't need much glue since it's very thin. Here's the final collage. I don't think I've created a similar collage to this one where the ground is the focal point. As with the other two collages, I'm happy with the way this one turned out. Let's wrap up the video in the next section. I had fun creating each collage. I'm coming away from this experience with more knowledge on how to collage on top of a busy ground. Next time I want to use this gift card technique on top of or with collage papers, not as a ground technique. I'm going to use a glue stick again to adhere deli and transparent papers in a collage. I want to test it out to make sure the papers will stick permanently. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you tried applying paint with a gift card or a similar type card. What are your thoughts on this technique? Also, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. See you soon. Take care.